invincible man in the countryside. After a long day of adventure in the wilderness, a body needs sustenance, and it's hard to beat a hearty bowl of hominy. What hominy is, is basically a form of modified corn. People who live in corn-dependent diets can get a vitamin deficiency called pellagra, which trust me, you don't want to get it. With cooking hominy, though, it changes some of the chemical makeup of the corn, and although it does take away some nutrients, it adds other ones that will help you keep from keeping to help you to keep from getting vitamin deficiencies. Also, once your hominy is finished, it can be dried and it will keep next to forever. Hominy is also used besides just in different kinds of soups or in the southwest it's called pasole, but it can also be ground and it's used as masa harina, which is the outer coating for a tamale. And a coarser type of hominy flour is used for making corn tortillas and in turn tortilla chips. In order to make this, you'll need some kind of a kettle. If you're cooking it outside, old brass kettles work terrific. And frankly, this film had originally been done outside, but it was so windy that you couldn't hear any kind of instructions. This one's stainless steel. Whatever you do, though, make sure you don't use aluminum because it'll have a chemical reaction with the lye that you ultimately put in to make the hominy. You have your kettle. You'll also need some kind of corn. Sweet corn or popcorn won't work. However, dead corns will. Flower corns will and flint corns will. This is Ponca gray flower corn. What we're actually going to wind up using is Osage red flower corn. You'll also need some form of lye. Red devil lye can be used, and although it's a drain cleaner, it's basically 100% lye. This is difficult to get your hands on these days, though, and when you rinse it, it's much, although it works a lot faster, it's much more difficult to rinse all of this out than it is using wood ash, which is what we're going to use. I get my ashes directly out of the fireplace. I'll show you how to sift them. Uh, the harder the wood that you use, the better your comedy is going to be because it will cook faster. I'm in the southwest and we don't have an awful lot of hard wood and it takes a little bit longer, but it still works. Also, using, using wood ash will add a little bit different flavor to the hominy, which I like and most people who eat traditional hominy do like that. You'll also need some kind of a colander for rinsing out the hominy. Also, I use a window screen for not only sifting the ashes, but that's what I dry the hominy on. You can't even use a bed sheet. You can put it in a dehydrator also. I use a wood or a window screen. Let's go ahead and start cooking it. This is my ash can that I keep sifted ashes in. Here's my window screen, and this is fairly simple. The bottom line is you just want to make sure that you get any kind of cinders or anything that was in your firewood sifted out. Go ahead and pour some ash there out of the fireplace. And just shake it and your clean ashes will fall down into your ash bucket. Here's our sifted ashes, and you can see I already have our corn in the kettle. This is six cups of corn, and for the proper measurement in this, use equal parts corn to equal parts ash. So we'll go ahead and measure two, four, and six cups ashes. Then we'll go ahead and fill it up with water and start cooking it. Here's our corn and ash. 
and we're just going to mix this up together and fill up the kettle all the way with water. Get some kind of wood uh, spoon of some kind to stir it with and make sure it's good and mixed up. What this, the, what the wood ash actually does, or the lye if you use lye, because wood ash has lye in it, is it winds up cooking out, cooking off the actual outer shell of the corn and although that takes nutrients away as I explained it also adds other amino acids so as we watch this happen you'll see those outer skins start to slip off and the corn will actually start swelling up and it'll start looking like more like hominy that you get out of a can but it tastes much much better seems to be mixed up let's go ahead and put it on the stove as I said, I originally filmed this outdoors over an open fire, which is a little bit more romantic, but the wind has been up too much, you couldn't hear the narration, and it was way too hard to regulate the heat. On a kitchen stove, it's much easier. Go ahead and turn your heat on, and you'll want to get this to a rolling boil. At first, keep an eye on it, make sure that it doesn't get too hot, because if it boils over, you'll get ash all over your stove, which of course can be cleaned up, but it's a little bit messy. So we'll let this go ahead and keep cooking until we start getting it at a boil. With the hardwood ash, you can finish this in up to an hour and a half. With this softwood, it may take a little bit longer than that, possibly up to about three hours of actual cooking. Let's go ahead and let it cook. You can see that our mixture is at a boil. And you'll want to keep this at a heat where it's at a rolling boil, but it doesn't boil over. Stir it occasionally to make sure it doesn't get cooked under the bottom of the kettle. 